I'm Robert, and you're always welcome here in my busy little shop. On today's episode of What's on My Workbench, we're going to continue on with the uh, knife sheath build, where we're going to replace this sheath and a little peek there with the sheath that uh, uh, I've designed to replace it. So, hope you enjoy following along on part two. If you missed the other one on part one, I showed you how I go about designing a knife sheath and making my own pattern. Hope you're having a great day. All right, so if you remember, I had this uh, pattern made for the, uh, the sheath and the uh, mechanism to hold it onto the belt. And so I've layered up some leather and have cut that. I need to punch these holes out and then I'm gonna dye this to the same color as the holster. And this slot's not long enough, so I'll just keep it in the slot and just nibble off a little bit additional here. So this was the leather pattern that I made for the sheath. 
it'll go about like this. So you've seen I tooled the outer part of that sheath. This is it here. And uh, and when I say outer part, I, I went ahead and I, and I dyed it, but I tooled the outer skin of this two layer sheath and uh, tooled it and dyed it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer it to another piece of leather so that I am able then to attach it on here. So a little bit of a process here. I'm going to, um, like I said, layer this up and I wanted to leave the inside natural colored so that you wouldn't have any chance of having color transfer onto this uh, antler handle. So that's the, that's the main reason why. I think it's coming along good. So the next thing I need to do is I'll grab leather and I'll layer this up here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and dye this so that I'm able to uh, get it dry and be able to sew it because the, what I'll do is once I get this layered up is I'll get it placed on here, I'll open it up and I will sew it to the, um, the backing part that goes through the belt. I need to laminate these two together. So I'll glue these both up and then uh, I'll come back when we're ready to put them together. So I have the two layers now, uh, got contact adhesive on them. They're tacked up, they're ready to laminate together. Before I put the contact adhesive, I made sure I had a pretty good crease where I want my bend on this. Because as I said before, you could do this flat, but then when you, when you roll it up, you'd end up with some, you know, uh, wrinkles in there. And it would be on the inside of the sheath, probably not that big a deal, but it bothers me. So I'm going to get it close to that shape before I laminate them together. So I'll, I'll laminate the one half and then I'll fold this over pretty tightly and uh, put it in there. And if you ever get any uh, residue on your fingers, the little crepe contact uh, adhesive remover does a good job of, of erasing it from your hands. Okay, so I've got it laminated together here and I'm gonna roll that in. Got it put together. This leather edge here is rough. Uh, I left this large so I can trim it when I get done. But my stitch line is going to be about a quarter of an inch off of this line here, all the way around. So that will be what I need to do next is I'm going to trim off some of this excess. So I'm not dealing with this contact adhesive. But the next thing I need to do is I need to scribe that line around here so that I can get this uh, ready to be assembled. And then I need to cut my welt here. We talked a little bit about that. Uh, it's just gonna follow that same contour. So I'll go ahead and do that here in a minute and I'll have that welt ready. Time for a new blade. You can strop these if you want. Um, they last a pretty long time for me, so I do strop them. If I'm stropping something else on the table, I'll go ahead and do it, but I don't get the stuff out to strop it on its own.
Okay. I'm gonna go ahead before I trim this off, I'm gonna put one coat of resin on here. And the reason why is when I sandwich it onto the, um, I need to come up with a name for it. I'll call it the belt strap. Whenever I get ready to uh, connect it to the belt strap, I won't be able to seal that very well. So I wanna get a coat of resin on here to get that all sealed up. I'm not going to use resin on the inside of the holster. I'm going to oil that. Resin on the inside, just oiled. We are getting there for sure. So I kept the piece that I made the, uh, the leather pattern out of. <clears throat> I kept this piece. I'm gonna cut my um, welt out of that. So I just need, uh, I'm gonna cut, probably just go ahead and cut like three quarters of an inch strap around here. And that will give me enough to where it hangs out past here. When I get it all done, I'll be able to trim it uh, all together in one piece like this went down here I'll straighten this out this cut and I'll end up leaving a little bit of a weep hole down here in case the owner was ever to get water inside the sheath to where the water would drain out the tip I need to know where to put the adhesive. And I can stay back slightly from that edge. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and oil inside of here. Um, and I'm gonna try to stay off of here as much as possible so that I don't make it hard for the contact adhesive to, to stick there. If you're putting oil on, I would just put it on, uh, you know, as evenly as possible. But a lot of the coloring changes once the oil has a chance to soak in because it actually moves into the leather, but along the, the uh, film of leather as well. So it'll even out a lot of times on its own. It may seem like a lot, but there's a lot of leather here and it'll soak in. Okay. I talked about doing a couple layers, but I think that's going to be enough leather there for my welt. I 
I cut that a little bit of an angle there back from it so that when you're putting the knife in, if it gets a little bit out of place, it'll guide it into the sheath. I think I'm gonna take just a little bit of that edge off there. All right. I need to remember not to get in a hurry here and glue this together. I need to sew this to the other piece yet. Let's see what that one looks like. I dip dyed it. I need to burnish this. I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I'll burnish this on my own. I'll burnish this and get a coat of Reslin on it. And then when I get that done, we'll come back and figure out how we want to sew that onto the, uh, the belt strip. We're getting close. And I'm going to change this angle a little bit. I'm going to clean it up a little bit more, uh, along this line and maybe around this corner a little bit more here. I need to get that all figured out before I do the sewing. And then on the sewing, I will start uh, here and I'll work down to the point to where it starts into the welt. And I'll, so I'll be sewing just through this outer layer here. And when I get to this point, then I'll be sewing through the outer layer, the welt, the, um, and the, the bottom layer here. And I'm gonna see if I can do it without having to get into this piece here. If I keep my stitching on this fairly uh, small, I should be able to work around this. I'm gonna lay in here my stitching line. Now I'm gonna stop there because I'm gonna trim this and shape this. So I'm gonna start here with my stitches and work my way to the tip. There'll be my stitching line, and then I'll be trimmed out here. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's see how this goes. You holding your breath with me? And I don't need a whole lot here. I just need like an inch, inch and a half stitch line to hold this on there. Let me move forward and I'll back stitch there. I'm going to tap this down a little bit. The uh, I'm using the back side. The knife should never be able to get a hold of that thread, but I want to make sure. We are getting a lot closer. Next thing I need to do is get the welt in there. So I need to get contact adhesive in here. I need to draw where that welt ends so I don't continue contact adhesive too far. 
I think we are ready. I'm staying back just a little bit down here to leave a, like I mentioned before, a drain hole for the, for any water that may migrate into here. If it's out raining. Okay. And now I need to line this outer piece here up. Not worrying too much about the welt. I'm trying to line up the sheath material itself, not the welt. All right. The next thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> this contact adhesive, you're not getting that apart. So at this point, you could really ship this sheath the way it is. Uh, you know, obviously form fit it for the uh, knife and uh, ship it as it is without doing the stitching. It will not come apart, but that's not what I do. So I'm going to, uh, eventually I'm going to wet form this here. You'll see where the, um, I can't think of the term for that, the ferrule. You'll see where that ends because it'll be form fit to that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where my outside line is here. I'll get this leather all trimmed. I'm going to edge on it. You'll be along for the ride, but I'm going to edge along it. And then uh, I'll burnish and polish the edge while I can get this out of my way while I'm working on it. I think I need to finish up my, whatever my final shape is back here. I need to finish that up now. Yes, whenever I do each of these steps, I'm always like, uh, what's next, you know? I think I'm gonna follow this line of the back side a little bit here, potentially screw it up. I'm liking it. Hopefully my customer is. He basically handed me a knife and made it, said, make me a sheath. So, I mean, that's uh, definitely a level of trust. I'm excited to see how it looks. And I wish I was there to hand it to him in person instead of shipping it to him. Because I'd really like to see what he thinks when he first opens it. But I'm, I'm fairly confident he'll like it. All right, trim this. Next step. All right. This is where the rubber meets the road here. My expensive Stanley 299 knife here. You know what? I'm going to use my pretty knife. I bought this from Aaron Heiser, uh, Maker's Leather Supply, and it's a nice knife. It is, it is sharp. Let's see if I can keep my knife vertical. It's hard to see the, the little mark.
you know, really I could have left this eighth inch strong and sand down to it with my sander burnisher. Connect the dots, so to speak, here. I know, someone's screaming, you're not using that knife right. It cut. It will keel. All right, I keep saying we're getting closer, and we are. So I used my number four Ron's edger and just worked on this edge a little bit here, get it rounded, started rounding. And I've got a bunch of hand sanding to get it exactly where I want it. Get the uh, leather smooth down a little bit. When I get it where I want it, then I have to get the uh, die out and re-dye this edge. I could leave it natural, just burnish it. You would see more of the edge of the leather the grain kind of like you would on wood i gotta think about that for a minute so i've got it to this stage here um i've got it cut to shape i need to do the stitching that's uh one of the next ones really thinking about putting a copper rivet one here where the uh, the welt ends, uh, I think it'd be kind of a pretty little uh, spot on there. But then do you put one here? And if you put one there, then I feel like you need one here. And the way I would do that is I would make the holes for each of these. I would stitch through and stitch through those holes and then just put the rivet through the hole. Hmm. I gotta think on it. I went ahead and made holes for copper rivets. I'm going to put those in and uh, I'm going to let you follow along. When I get down in here, I'm going to have to be using an awl to try to push through all that leather and that's probably going to be a challenging so it's probably going to be music only because there might be some uh, unmusical thoughts out loud in that process. I'm still trying to figure out. I'm thinking about leaving this natural. I may have to uh, send pictures to the gentleman I'm making it for and get his feedback on it. I'm using Tiger Ritz of Thread. I know, you probably knew that. But I'm, I'm using a heavier thread, mainly because I just felt with the mass of the sheath that the thicker thread would look better. So this is the 1.2 Tiger Ritz of Black.
And I'm just going through this outer layer. Once again, I use the word pretty often, but decorative. I think it's more decorative than anything. I didn't want to stop here. I mean, I could, and I think it would make sense there as well. Stop it where the copper rivet's at, but I'm not. I'm going to continue on out to the end here and on around. And even though there's a little bit of welt here past the copper rivet, that compression of the copper rivet will hold that. And what I don't want to do is expose the thread there to where when you're putting the knife in, you might catch that and then unravel this. So I'm going to go all the way to the copper rivet before I go through all those layers. I had someone ask one time, why'd you do it that way? I said, I'm glad you asked, because typically I've got a reason why I do things the way I do it. Just like probably everybody here. Action here on the sewing. All right, let me go get a uh, an awl. I'm gonna start with this one, see how this works. This is an awl that I uh, I got, it's an antique, and I reworked it all and reshaped the tip. The tip was uh, broken on it, so I put a new tip on it and sharpened it up. Yes, it makes me nervous running this towards my other hand. Okay. We'll give this one a try. You get a few stitches in the leather kind of starts to close up around that hole may seem like a lot of leather here and it's it's significant 
but I think it's about right for the size of the blade, the heft of the blade. Um, I don't think it looks awkward that size and uh, offers a little more protection out here at the tip of the, the blade. So and probably, oh, let's see how big that is. That's uh, 7 sixteenths. Technically then my sewing machine should be able to sew that. And if I had 40 feet of it, and I would try it, but it doesn't really take me that long to hand sew this little stretch. I gave the gentleman a price on building this, a range. Probably should have been higher, but you know, it's been a fun project. It turned into a, to me, a little more detail than I had originally anticipated. So that's part of the reason why it's, you know, probably should have been more, but I guess we'll see if he likes it. I'll send him the video. Maybe he'll uh, give us a thumbs up and a comment. Yeah, I'm gonna dye it. I think uh, it stands out too much. I've gotta put the uh, copper rivets in here, but I'm gonna put my dye on here first and then we'll go from there. Got some of those uh, refillable markers, and they do a pretty good job. But the, of course, I'm usually just touching up the edge of a, you know, a belt. And I like the Q-tip because uh, once I'm done, I just bitch it. I'm gonna trim this inside, but on purpose, I left that edge to trim off till after I dyed this. It's allowed me to make a clean separation between um, what's dyed and what isn't. We're closer yet. I am going to uh, Show you how it fits in here. I think it looks pretty good. I think that's a nice uh, fit. Plenty of handle to grab a hold of. Plenty of friction to hold it. Uh, I started to soak this a little bit here so that I can wet form. And what that helps do, wet form this will give me a a more of a stopping point so you don't try to push it through too far and then I'll form on the back side here of this um, ferrule and that will help to um, keep it from wanting to slip out on its own so you can see it's a little bit wet here I put some water on the inside I'm gonna let that soak in a little bit I'll add a little bit of water but while I'm doing that let's go ahead and put in the three copper rivets here and this is going to be a tight fit. Right. I decided to put all three copper, rivet, copper rivets in. I think it'll look good. 
it makes it stronger. Not sure that it needed it. that one. Yep. Let me get these burrs started on here. One side domes it, the other side sets the burr. See now the burr is set down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten that one up a little bit more. Okay. The copper is fairly easy to cut as opposed to the uh, brass. All right, now we'll dome those over. and make sure there's no rough spots. A little bit of a burr there. And then the back gets shaped with this cupped part here. I'm gonna go rinse more water in here and we'll do the final fitting. I think you can see there's a little bit of a ridge right here. Let me see if I can get the angle. Let me pull this back. You can see there's a little bit of a ridge right here. That is this. And I'm gonna continue to work on that to make that so it's a little bit of a, a notch that it fits into there. and I'll push on both sides of this and create an indentation in the leather there. The result will be it'll it'll catch in that when you when you get it where it needs to go. And it'll help keep it from wanting to fall out. Putting the final finish on this, and uh, this will be ready to send off to its owner. And I'll model it beforehand. I don't know, maybe you can hear it kind of click into place. Okay. I'll let this dry. Uh, we'll come back in a few hours here and do our final walk around of it. Take a look at it here.
Thanks for watching today. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.